Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins uh, governance meeting. Today is March 24th, and we have several contributors on the call. Uh, Gavin Morgan, Evelina Wilkes, um, uh, Mark Waite, and Uli Hafner, and me. So we have several uh, topics in the agenda. We will talk about news, then uh, there is CLA process update, uh, trademark transition update, and uh, yeah, then we can actually uh, talk about more interesting uh, topics like uh, Jenkins events and what we want to see this year. Also, Google Season of Dogs uh, budget request review so that we can uh, um, uh, align on what we submit to Google for this program. And uh, yeah, the visiting discussion about Jenkins 3 is just to continue this discussion about what we have in the mailing list and to see whether we have a consensus about whether we want to release it and if yes, when. So this is a topic uh, I put uh, here, and if you have any other topics, we can discuss them later. Okay, so first of all, welcome, Evelina. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, last, at the last meeting, we made a confirmation, um, and yeah, Evelina will be a Jenkins Governance Board member until December 2022. Uh, so until uh, the end of the, uh, the term, and yeah, it's more than uh, one year. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, why not? <laughs> uh, I, uh, as as it says in the in the short uh, bio, I, I work in IT since I think 2007. I when I was preparing preparing the text, I was actually a bit shocked <laughs> to discover it's already uh, uh, that long. And uh, uh, a little bit more than four years ago, I started working as a, a CICD consultant uh, and uh, straight away I was given Jenkins that I was supposed to approach with some kind of escort attitude and uh, uh, I'm still kind of doing it. <laughs> uh, as a consultant uh, I, I work with a variety of customers from small uh, single instance uh, uh, to uh, I have no idea how many Jenkins instances my cust current customer has. And I, I think that gives me a really good perspective uh, regarding what 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 they are what issues they are facing and what is uh, what is attracting them towards Jenkins and and what is uh, maybe the less uh, uh, fun part. So I, I do hope that I can uh, by being a member of this board uh, well help Jenkins uh, and uh, help those users. So I'm I'm really grateful for the opportunity you all gave me. So uh, thank you. Thank you too for all the contributions. Any additional comments? Okay. So let's move forward. Uh, we have a few news about the upcoming events. I guess basically that's all we have recently maybe a lcs status check but uh, yeah ah, okay LCS status yeah so regarding the upcoming events we uh, are working on google summer of code uh, there are less than three weeks left until the student application deadline we have uh, a number of students reaching out uh, the traffic is uh, slightly lower than in previous years uh, maybe because of uh, visibility of the project uh, so if you are a mentor or if you're interested in Google Summer of Code, uh, please uh, help us to promote the event, maybe through social media and whatever. And yeah, we'll be spending some time uh, in the coming days also to um, make the announcements because uh, we did some prep work. Um, uh, a few stud students have recorded uh, videos with uh, the experiences from Google Summer of Code. We also uh, put a um, student uh, testimonials here and they're pretty cool so maybe we will republish them somehow um, and yeah mm, any promotion uh, will be appreciated so uh, then uh, thanks to mark uh, and uh, all other participants uh, christian and Others, uh, we will be a mentoring organization in Shikot, Africa. It's a month long hackathon uh, in uh, April. So, Mark, would you like to summarize it? Sure. So, the, the concept that we had was that the, the idea that Shikot, Africa has is they want to, they will pay women 
for during the month of April to write code for open source projects. And our project idea proposal is that they these developers will build plugins and then use their ability to build those plugins to add documentation to the plugin so that we get better documentation for the pipeline steps, the arguments for pipeline steps, and better examples for pipeline. So they learn how to compile plugins, they learn how to use those plugins in Jenkins, and we get uh, better documentation for pipeline steps. The most common complaint in our documentation feedback is give me more examples and give me better documentation. And this is our attempt to help these women as they learn more about developing code and for Jenkins and help us as we get uh, better documentation and better experience for our users running pipelines. Thanks for the summary. Um, yeah, so this event uh, is starting soon. So if you're interested to participate, uh, there are still opportunities for mentors. So there are also opportunities uh, for mentors. Uh, so just consider that. And yeah, speaking of that, uh, actually today we had a presentation at another program called uh, a Spring of Code. It's another month long mentorship program. And if you're interested, uh, they, uh, they will be recording published soon. Uh, so, Mark, brought to you both of them, where are you doing the discussions? Like, are you going to do it on, on Gitter and should we join the channel if we want to help out but not officially mentor? Sure. Yeah, they'll happen in the in the documentations channel and documentation sick channel on Gitter. Okay. And we'll we'll actually publicly announce the office hours. We're going to meet twice a week with these these people that we're mentoring, and so we'll we'll assure that the conversations happen in the SIG channel, and that the it's known where the where and when the um, office hours happen. Yeah, I, I assume there's lots of people like me that can help out, but can't commit to weekly office hours type things. Yeah, and 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 that is that would be great. I suspect we're going to find things where where people need to, where they, we need some expertise from a specific plugin, but we're hoping that we'll be able to help before we get to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And the Springer, Springer docs would be the same thing, or Springer code will be, oh, it should be all over the place, like summer code, right? Uh, Spring of code is a bit different because, uh, so there is no mentorship organizations per se. Uh, uh, just a second. Yeah, I wasn't uh, prepared to that. So, yeah. So basically, a spring of code. Um, we did a presentation today about contributing to the Jenkins project because we were invited by organizers. So basically, a spring of code is, a, is organized by uh, Code for Cause, um, and it's a pretty uh, popular uh, organization in India. They have more subscribers than Jenkins uh, on YouTube. And uh, actually it was a really good experience and there are many open source projects participating and presenting. And yeah, now Jenkins is one of them. So if people want to help out or contribute or anything else, are they going to, I guess, the Discord for Spring and Code? Or do we have a channel that we want people to hang out in? Uh, it's uh, Discord. So you can uh, find the guidelines here. It's participation okay. for students. So it's entirely uh, their system, not ours. Yeah, right. Okay. So, and yeah, there is no particular way for projects to be represented per se, to be highlighted on the site. Uh, the approach is quite different. So students basically select a project, uh, then start contributing. And, and then there are some mentors uh, from the program. So for example, one of uh, our JSOC mentors, uh, Shivai, uh, she all, uh, sorry, he also participates in this uh, program. Uh, and yeah, if you're interested, you can probably join as mentor uh, by uh, contacting organizers. I can share the contacts. And yeah, hopefully somebody will join the program uh, and participate in Jenkins or maybe apply to Google Summer of Code. So let's see. Uh, but yeah, thank you so for all that. Yeah, for well, we were invited. Um, and yeah, I think it was a really good experience, and we plan to repeat uh, the majority of the presentation next week at the Jinkis online meetup. So, 
maybe we will reuse the content. Okay, and Google season of docs. Again, uh, the application deadline is tomorrow on Friday. And we have an application ready. We will review it later uh, together with the budget. But yeah, we intend to participate in Google season of docs and uh, other CDF projects are likely to participate as well. Uh, but we apply separately because uh, the framework this time is that uh, each project uh, submits one application and one project idea. So it's not like uh, we had a JSOC, uh, sorry, JSOC last year when it was mostly like JSOC, but uh, on a lower scale, now it's a completely different program. But uh, budget wise as well. Okay, so yeah, we'll talk about it later. And yeah, LCS status. So just a quick one. Um, yeah, as we discussed at the last meeting, uh, when uh, the LTS was just released, um, yeah, we expected a number of regression reports, uh, and that's pretty much what happened. Uh, so we experienced issues with mostly tables to diffs migration. Also, um, yeah, if you look at the upgrade guide, guide uh, actually there are many other changes uh, which we uh, hit. So one of the regressions which wasn't expected, it's installation wizard uh, showing up on startup in some conditions. So we basically documented it as a known issue, uh, but yeah, still uh, well, the list is quite long. Uh, nothing really terrible happened, um, but yeah, the community feedback is not good from what we see here part of the reason that uh, not all uh, plugins uh, for tables to diffs have been released in time and some uh, plugins still need to be released uh, also we have issue with tfs plugin we discussed before we have uh, issues uh, for example scripter plugin still needs to be updated and a few other plugins which are widely used so <clears throat> yeah um, so our main objective is to fix all that uh, until the two Any questions, comments? I'm really excited for dot two, but I got hit by one of the bugs, so I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. so, so Gavin, is the bug that you were hit by in the backporting pull request yes. that I just submitted? Oh, very good. Yeah, okay, glad Tim, to hear that. Tim Tim and I put it in there, or Tim put it in right away. I'm really excited for it, so. Excellent. Yeah, so, yeah. We have the first uh, pull request submitted for backporting. If we have something severe, we can probably release it even earlier than according to the schedule. Because to be honest, oh. right now I don't see any major change to be backported. That first one is the one I really want. So, oh yeah. So let's see. But yeah, right now there is. Well, nothing really fatal in this release, but at the same time, if we fix uh, this issue, if we have a fix submitted for the update center, uh, so we have a fix submitted by Daniel for that, which we could probably backport as well. Is it worth to backport it? Uh, do I mess up with the things completely? Which fix for the update center? Uh, so installation wizard uh, showing up on startup. Oh, okay. I have not done that. I don't think that we have that in a weekly yet. Okay, I might have messed up the things, but I thought that to be had a fix and integrated it. Mm. Definitely not uh, the best meeting to deep dive, but yeah. Uh, from a broken update wizard, it's uh, yeah the root cause. And okay, I mess up something. Sorry. Mm. I thought uh, there is a fix, uh, and the, the, the fix has been integrated. Yeah. So, oh. Uh, let's see what we do next, but yeah, maybe releasing uh, .2 earlier is a possible strategy. 
to be discussed offline. Let's go to the main agenda part then. Okay, uh, so one uh, bureaucracy related topics is CLA Pro Sys update, so contributor license agreement. Uh, it's uh, related to the trademark uh, transition uh, we had recently. So I'll just cover two topics in parallel. So for trademark uh, transition, uh, the uh, process is basically over. Um, the documentation has been updated. Um, so what I uh, communicated in the mailing list, we had some unexpected obstacles. For example, uh, there is no longer a sublicense process because uh, the Linux Foundation has sublicense process only for the Linux trademark, but not for other trademarks like Kubernetes. So basically we removed uh, this part and now we only have trademark attribution, but it's compensated by the fact that uh, yeah, as long as you follow the naming convention, uh, yeah, you don't have to spend time on approving that. So the documentation has been updated, uh, it's in place and uh, we still need to communicate it by a blog post and by reaching out maybe to vendors directly because one of the consequences is that they should gradually update uh, Jenkins trademark references on their websites and in their materials, which will be additional overhead, but there is no need to do it right now or tomorrow. We would expect uh, them to gradually migrate. So, um, good question about the mark usages. Mm -hmm. um, the previously approved trademark usages remain approved, this even with the problem with the Linux mark. Yes, they do. Okay, all right. So we got explicit confirmation from the CDF that all these trademarks are fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, Linux Foundation uh, legal team was in CC, they were not against that. And uh, I believe that this topic is concluded. Moreover, there is a uh, proposal uh, from uh, Trace Miranda that if uh, we want to have um, additional exception names, for example, let's say company name uh, Jenkins platform, because we have uh, two company name uh, Jenkins platforms in the approved list. So we could uh, introduce uh, a certification process and uh, any distribution of Jenkins which passes this certification could be called uh, with such pattern. So this is uh, what they do, for example, for Kubernetes. But uh, yeah, it's a process which needs to be established. Um, and uh, I'm not sure whether there is any practical need to establish it right now. So I would propose to not spend much time on that until there is a real demand. So basically once the first person shows up who wants to name a thing, that'll take a few months. Likely. Well, uh, we could uh, work on that, uh, but yeah, to be honest, uh, if you ask me how we would certify a Jenkins distribution, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, it, the specific thing was if they want to name it company name Jenkins platform, right? Is that, isn't that what you're saying? Oh, like it's not, they can still, I can still use the Jenkins trademark with the following the Linux foundation pattern. I can yeah. use, I could ask for separate approval for a different thing, but the specific platform idea was based on their, the notion that Linux foundation offers of a certified yes this is a is a, a a good distribution yeah right okay so yeah we could uh, have a process for that though it's a bit tricky because we could say that uh, it's you pass uh, jenkins acceptance test harness uh, so let's assume that at least jenkins passes jenkins acceptance test harness uh, but yeah, it's uh, not uh, that trivial in practice because, for example, we have Jenkins file runner. How do you launch it? Whether it's Jenkins or not, well, personally, I think it's not Jenkins, but yeah, it's a completely different discussion. So, mm, well, I think that uh, basically Daniel is right. So if there is such request, if we decide to proceed, it will uh, take a few months.
Okay. So this is oh, what the... Sorry, one thing on that. Yeah. I will say, I think in general, we should say if a company is um, running their own distribution or run is publishing their own distribution, then we're not going to supply a support for them. Because I I want to, like a blanket, like every time someone asks a question in IRC, anything, I'm like, and they say, we're using CloudBees, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, you have to take it out with CloudBees. We're not going to support because it's all closed. Technically, it's closed source. So yeah, that would be one of the certification things that would be important to me. Uh, could you repeat the beginning of what you said? What's the, the support? For I I don't want to I want to make sure that if people are creating people should be going through the company's support if they're making their own distribution before they do the open source support and I think the company needs to acknowledge that they have to have a support system if they're going to call themselves having a Jenkins distribution I think it's a long topic to discuss yeah and likely there will be many st strong opinions there yeah. uh, from vendors, from the community members. So I would prefer to not go in this uh, rabbit hole until we are forced to. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, okay. The next uh, related topic is about CLA process because uh, our CLA process is basically the last holdout of uh, um, the former uh, um, SPI legal entity. So, well, uh, Software in Public Interest is a great uh, foundation. Uh, they helped us a lot. Uh, but for example, uh, our CLA process now explicitly says that, uh, well, basically it's a uh, uh, transition to the Software in Public Interest. So if you go to, let's say, individual company license agreement, or Jenkins and associated pro Project of software in public interest, uh, computer license agreement. So this contributor license agreement, uh, basically, apart from a lot of words, says that yeah, I understand the trademark, um, I grant a copyright license. Uh, so it's just to, well, it's a part of the meta license anyway, but uh, yeah, it's um, duplicated there. There is also a grant of patent license, which is important for many projects. And note that MIT license, the license we use by default, says nothing about patents. It's one of the main differences uh, versus Apache license V2. So this is a pretty important thing. Um, and yeah, and you say that uh, basically uh, you are eligible uh, to sign this agreement, etc., etc. Uh, so. Well, uh, this is basically the CLA, which is used in many open source projects. For example, Tikton, uh, also a part of the CDF, they use pretty much the same agreement. Uh, SPA is just replaced uh, by the Linux Foundation. And uh, actually, when we move uh, these CLAs, it's also something we should do. So there are a few other questions. So one of that, as a board member, I would like to get all rid of this process and uh, replace it uh, by easy CLA provided by the Linux Foundation. Uh, so just to explain how it happens now, um, as a user or as a company, you have to download uh, this file, print it, uh, sign it, scan it, uh, encrypt it, uh, submit it uh, to the uh, repository as a pull request or if your company uh, to the board mailing list. Then uh, the recipient uh, needs to decode uh, uh, signed documents, so only a governance board member can do it with uh, proper uh, private key. Um, uh, verifies that everything is correct, confirms it, and uh, approves pull requests or adds it to the repository. So let's say it takes time. And uh, the proposal is to replace it uh, by uh, LFX tool, which is called Easy CLA. And for example, uh, Tikton already uses it with uh, CLA and company CLA equal uh, to what we have in Jenkins. And basically, this tool which allows to automate that so that everything can be done uh, quite quickly uh, through the database and that uh, these approvals are stored. Uh, 
uh, on the Linux Foundation side. Uh, so we don't have to pay about protecting personal data. That's why we encrypt it before putting these files in the, the repositories, um, etc. So instead of that, uh, it would be a storage which is completely uploaded. So. So I am wholeheartedly uh, agreed with moving to easy CLA. Mm -hmm. I am curious about who actually has access to do the old system though. Is it like just you? Well, uh, it's not just me because I haven't set it up, but yeah, there might be multiple admins and the default approach is that all board members- Oh, sorry, I meant, I meant the old system. Uh, so for old system uh, right now, it's uh, uh, so for the keys. So basically, uh, all previous board members had access to this key. Okay. I'm not sure whether Alex Earl uh, um, have verified that, uh, but yeah, I believe that uh, all of us uh, got this key from Kiki. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this process is it, it was horrible to sign. It's horrible for everybody. Yeah. What happens right now if someone contributes to core that hasn't signed the CLA? Does uh, that so mean that technically they can claim uh, a patent on any, something they submitted? Technically, yes. If you want to throw all the Jenkins project and that's why in the mailing list, I raised the question of whether we yeah. want to actually enforce the CLA for contributors. Because our current policy that we ask uh, uh, only uh, we sign CLA only for contributors uh, who want to get special permissions like merge permissions or permissions to publish to our YouTube, to social media, to be a part of the security team. Uh, but for common contributors, no, we don't. Yeah, um, that, that's why I was asking because I was curious about that third question you, you asked. So, yeah. So this question is asked for a reason because now Theoretically, you can file a claim. Wait, I can't. I already signed. Well, okay, you did. Uh, but well, even you did sign it with software in public interest, not with the Linux Foundation, and the, yeah, there may be tricky topics. Uh, but yeah, so this is uh, actually a really important question. What we want to do about that? So. Uh, I think easy CLA is the same one I've used at other, on other ones, which essentially it adds a check to the PR and says, you haven't signed it, click here. You mm -hmm. fill out a form. I think the screenshots look similar and then that's it. Like there's not a lot of work. Does the board have to approve it after you signed it or is it just done then? I haven't checked. I yeah. hope that it can be configured. Yeah. And so if, if that's the be... case and it's just, that's it, I think it should be something that we should add to core. Anyone who wants to submit a PR to core should have a CLA signed. I think that we could uh, start at least with uh, opt-in. So just to dry run the system. And uh, then uh, we could probably start enforcing that. And so I would rather um, approach it uh, in two stages. Uh, there is also a proposal uh, from Andrew and actually just doing VCO. So basically it's adding signed off uh, by comment to commits. Um, so according to him, it's uh, likely the minimum requirement uh, from uh, the Linux Foundation legal. If we have been covered this topic, uh, well, to be honest, uh, yeah, I'm quite familiar with this process. I have no idea how it would protect anyone from uh, patent issues, um, but yeah, I'm not a lawyer. I prefer the CLA than this, but. So a uh, quick question. Um, I discussed this a very long time ago with, I think, Andrew Bayer. Mm -hmm. And he told me um, the Apache Software Foundation does not require or did not require everyone to have a CLA because the, it, basically only the people who merge need a CLA. Do I misremember that or is that some other system or was that just, you know, nonsense? Does that ring no, a bell? it's not nonsense. Uh, so you can interpret it. Yes, there is an author of the pull request. 
and actually the person who takes responsibility for integrating the code and who takes the responsibility for what this code contains. So, uh, yeah, we had the same discussion for hardware open source licenses. And uh, yeah, it's possible to interpret uh, people who merge uh, pull requests as responsible for what they contain. Especially if you squash merge and you became the main committer. Uh, but so if yeah, someone went and got, Sorry, if someone went and took code from another project, submitted a PR, and then Oleg, you merged it, um, would you you would you would say that anyone who merged it would have to go and check to make sure that code isn't copyrighted somewhere else, or would you would it be okay just to say whoever merged it took it on best best faith? Because that to me is the difference between who needs to sign that. Yeah. So interpretation of what Daniel refers to that uh, the person who merges it takes the responsibility. And, and uh, I think that's a good starting spot, but I'm concerned longer term. Yeah, uh, so there are different uh, licenses. For example, you can copy paste code from Stack Overflow. Some of us do that, probably everyone. Um, and yeah, there is Stack Overflow license, as some people may know. Yeah. Yeah, every code that, I think it's everything, not even if you license anything else, is automatically the Stack Overflow license. Yeah. If when you register on Stack Overflow, you send and use it on agreement, and you agree that uh, everything you publish there is under this license. Which so, is not an OSI approved license, is it? Or is, are they using, I think they might be using one. I remember it was a big announcement I, a couple years ago, and people were upset about it. So I don't I think know, the, to be honest. Uh, the announcement a few years ago where people were upset, I think, was um, they use um, CC. Mm -hmm. um, Creative Commons, and they changed the version retroactively, which I think is not quite how things should be done. But yeah. Okay. So yeah, anyway, it's a separate topic. I think that uh, yeah, having a silly, if there is easy process to sign it, it would be fine. But yeah, the process has to be really easy for users. A few clicks, uh, you know, so frightening legal text, uh, etc. But yeah, we need to firstly prototype that. And I would suggest that we either do it opt in or start from a repository where we don't have so many contributors, for example, remoting or something like that. And but yeah, I think that CLIs need to be updated for sure, and that we should do it shortly uh, so that uh, we immigrate uh, the existing contributors and company contributors. I made some calculation. It's about a few dozen uh, uh, people and uh, two companies uh, which are likely need that. So many other entities and people don't actively contribute so they don't need to resign immediately. Okay. And uh, since we are talking about this topic, uh, a question for you, Daniel. So for other areas like security team membership, uh, would you like to have a different CLA? Because for example, uh, the current CLA doesn't say anything about non-disclosure. Right, but that does not, I mean, the L stands for license, right? So that mm -hmm. seems unrelated. Yeah, so it might be called different, like contributor agreement or whatever. Uh, yeah, personally, I don't have strong opinion there, uh, but if you want to introduce uh, additional uh, um, uh, steps so that uh, uh, um, participants uh, will do some kind of uh, commitment to the process, uh, then we can do it now. I mean, it would it would certainly be interesting to know what the options here are, um, because I haven't really looked into that before. Um, the vast majority of uh, contributors or uh, members of security team are always are the CloudBees employees who I'm working with. So, I mean, unless they want to get fired, uh, they don't publish stuff they're told. 
in, 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 in private and um, or otherwise uh, long time contributors where I didn't really have uh, any concerns. Uh, it would be interesting to know what the options here are. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it shouldn't be too much of a hurdle to get people at, in addition to everything else um, for people to sign up. But yeah. Yeah. But uh, our current situation that we have many vendors uh, of Jenkins who are not members of the security team. And well, it means that uh, if somebody uses these distributions, most likely they have a problem. And yeah, from the state of, uh, state of the Jenkins community, I would rather like to see these vendors represented on the security team. But yeah, it um, may make things much more complicated in terms of this bureaucracy. I mean, contribution-wise, that would be interesting. Um, but I mean, if they choose not to engage, then they don't know what's going on in advance. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it works only in both directions. So I think that uh, but we should be working towards that. And additionally, I, I would not really, I mean, I'm not trying to derail this conversation, but just getting people to sign up so they know things in advance. It's really a two way street. We really do expect them to contribute. Um, I regularly, um, if, if people stop um, their activities in the security team, I've repeatedly um, removed them from the team and said, well, you know, uh, just for security reasons, it's good practice. If you don't contribute, um, you're going to lose the access. Um, and uh, yeah, so while we have occasionally uh, people contribute um, from the from the community um, who are not, you know, basically working on it full time. Um, it, it's difficult for people to keep up the activity there. So yeah, that's that's a problem we recognize, but I don't really have a good solution there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we uh, could review that, uh, but yeah, we just need to find out whether there are existing precedents uh, in the Linux Foundation, so whether we could uh, reuse the existing legal framework. Most likely there is something for Linux and other big projects. And we can see whether it would be applicable to the Jenkins project organization. That would be great if you could kick that off or, you know, connect me with the people who can um, explain how this works. I don't know who exactly would it be, uh, but yeah, since we have other topics, I will take an action on that so that uh, we uh, have progress there. Because yeah, if there is existing framework, uh, then yeah, I think that we can just adopt uh, it. Okay, anything else on the CLA process? Uh, I specifically didn't mention anything about plugins. Because to be honest, I have no idea what to do with them. And until we have a good example in the Jenkins core repositories or in others, I don't think that it's even time to talk about plugins. I'm just going to throw out for plugins. Uh, I think it's easier, it's a lot easier to um, discontinue, uh, distribute, uh, dis defeated plugin than it is core itself. So I'm less concerned about plugins having the CLA than the core itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same thing. I mean, there are there are plugins and there are plugins, right? I mean, if someone shows up who committed substantial code to I don't know, workflow CPS or you know, git git client, 
and told us, hey, I, I want to cause trouble, um, that could uh, result in quite the problems. Yeah. So for that, uh, one thing that uh, maintainers can make decisions on their own if the tooling is configured properly. So for example, if there is uh, just a GitHub action or whatever, which integrates with ECCLA, or if there is equivalent simple process, uh, for example, like uh, a GitHub application we can just enable, uh, then yeah, it shouldn't be any concern because any maintainer can adopt it. And for the most of key plugins, we know who maintainers are, so yeah, you can work uh, with uh, stakeholders directly. Um, so while we're discussing plugins and CLAs, mm -hmm. um, what 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 about plugins where that already require a CLA, but for someone else? Are there any such plugins? Yes. I mean, we have a bunch Artifactory. of companies. Pardon? For example, Artifactory plugin. Is... Oh, right. Um, yeah. So does this clash? Would they do two CLAs? Do we throw them out? Is this OK? What's the... Is this compatible? So ideally, it should be a part of our hosting process where we declare the rules. Uh, because, for example, uh, currently requiring CLA can lock out contributors. Uh, also, I'm not sure how CLA could be compatible with our adoption process because one may require CLA and then uh, somebody adopts the plugin and removes all these requirements. How does it work? I don't know. Uh, so ideally, we should uh, set expectation uh, from newly hosted plugins that uh, there is no additional CLA required. I think it would be reasonable. Um, but uh, for existing plugins, yeah, I don't have a good answer. What's your opinion, Daniel? I have no opinion. I have just confusion and questions. Mm, that's nice. Uh, so propose updates uh, to the uh, plugin hosting guide. And that may be a bit early since we said just a minute ago, let's start with core and see how it works and then we can go beyond that. Well, we can uh, set the expectation that there is no external CLEs. Oh, OK, yeah, that makes sense. So it's something we can basically vote for at the next meeting. It's pretty much aligned with third party dependencies and other things. Uh, okay. Yeah, for existing plugins, I don't have clear answer. I mean, yeah, Artifactory plugin is probably an edge case for any problem we discuss. Uh, but yeah, there are other plugins uh, setting uh, silly expectations. So I guess so once we're ready, we should be working on uh, these plugin maintainers on basically uh, just the case by case basis so that to be uh, resolved that readily. Yeah, there are not so many plugins requiring CLA. Okay. So, any other topics about CLA process? Okay. So for Jenkins events, yeah, I just put a list uh, what, uh, which I was going to discuss at the tomorrow's advocacy and outreach seek, taking the time and I would rather skip it. And so one thing which is important is that um, we have voted for Jenkins Contributor Summit on June 25th. So it will be day after CDCon. And for that, I start the coordination doc uh, where we can collect uh, topics. 
So if you're interested to propose something uh, big, uh, it's a good opportunity to discuss. Because I think that uh, we could use this summit to actually bring really hot topics like what to do with Jenkins 3, also how we align Jenkins with Jenkins X, uh, because Jenkins X3 will include Jenkins again. And uh, topics like that, maybe what do we do with Blue Ocean? Um, so just to provide a topic which will definitely cause a lot of discussions. But I think that we can use Contributor Summit to really bring up uh, these painful topics and to see how we could resolve them. We strong arm people and make it think, make them think that they actually made that decision as well. I mean, not to get rid of Blue Ocean or anything, sort of, hypothetically. Well, I think that we actually need to come to consensus in many decisions and actually make the decisions together. Yes, I know. I because just want to get rid of blue. If we just want to, uh, to make decision on our own, whomever. Uh, no, no, no. I think you misunderstand. I don't want to tell people that we made the decision. I want to tell them that they made the decision. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, good. Don't worry about it. Ignore it. I think this governance uh, process is quite clear, and I think that we should follow that. No, ignore me. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, so regarding other events, uh, yeah, I'll send uh, the link to the uh, Google Doc later. And all other events is just for your information, basically. Uh, so yeah, we will have CDCon, we will have DevOps Vault and other things like GSOC, GSOC. Uh, one of the, the topics which may pop up is Java 17 compatibility. What do we do with it? Whether we want to have Hackfest again? Maybe. Uh, and yeah. So if you have any other ideas in mind, please submit them because um, yeah, mm, I'm not sure how we will be coordinating that, but uh, uh, knowing the expectations about events would help. And for me, like we discussed before the meetings, I consider myself as acting event officer and my main priority remains to find uh, new organizers and to onboard somebody to take this role. Uh, on that note, you're, I think you said it last time, but you're actively, sorry. If we find someone who's interested in the role but doesn't have experience, those are totally acceptable, right? Oh, yeah. So in this case, uh, yeah, shadow events officer, maybe for a few months of onboarding, yeah. knowledge transfers, uh, permissions, et cetera. And then we can uh, discuss uh, uh, doing handover. Yeah, so I've been reaching out to people who are in the marketing and event space and saying, you know, if you're looking to get into this, this space, it's a good opportunity to be mentored and practice in an environment that's a little bit more fostering than a new job. So I'm still reaching, I'm still trying, but I haven't found anyone yet. Yeah. So apparently there are so many event managers on uh, uh, basically on vacation now, uh, but they're not so many people were really interested in doing these events. Uh, I was talking uh, with a few uh, people from different companies I know, mm -hmm. uh, basically inviting them to spend some time in open source directly because, hey, it may help uh, you to build your portfolio, to find another job, etc. But yeah, as you may see, we don't really have new influx of contributors because of that. It, yeah. It's an app just case thing, but we might want to make a post on LinkedIn. It's probably the thing that people want to share and find. We so. could, we could uh, post a job on LinkedIn now. We have a almost professional account. Yeah, that, that's also true. Yeah. Way, honestly, I don't think LinkedIn jobs get shared nearly as much as a post does. So. Well, uh, but yeah, actually um, posting something about, uh, hey, we're looking for non-code contributors, specifically for event organizers. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense. <sighs> yeah, I can add an action item for myself. Uh, no commitment on time, or maybe somebody else wants to write it. I'll, I'll, I'll write up something, a draft, so you can see what you think of it. Okay. I feel like you do too much, and then I keep signing things to other people. I don't do too much, be sure. I think you do beyond too much that it wraps around back to not enough. I just joined this board and I already know that you do too much. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you know that? 
okay so Gavin if you could drop the proposal it would be super uh well not a, do you want a full blog post or do you just want like a LinkedIn thing oh uh, okay uh, post I don't I don't care that. which I just was curious what we wanted even if it's uh, 280 symbols it's perfectly fine you know okay. where we can put that right yep. okay yep um, so yeah Okay, uh, other events, uh, again, we will have advocacy and outreach meeting uh, tomorrow and uh, no real need uh, to discuss that. I suggest to quickly discuss the GSOT budget and uh, conclude the meeting so that we don't uh, spend too much over time. Okay, so for Google Season of Docs, uh, Mark, would you like to summarize it? Sure, Google Season of Docs is different this year in many respects. One of the differences is they ask that we submit a budget proposal uh, that we will then use to pay the writer that, and we will pay the writer from the Jenkins project for the writing that they do. Uh, if our project is accepted by Google Season of Docs, they will issue 40% of the funds immediately to us so that we can then engage the writer and begin the process. I made a wild guess here on an amount Google actually suggests, hey, you shouldn't probably ask for more than about 6,000, but this is to fund writing across a period of seven months. So what I've realized now after looking at it is that means we should expect that this writer will be part-time and part-time is okay. That's great. It's just what budget amount should we do? Uh, what, sh what budget amount should we request so that we don't cause them to panic, but we have a good chance of recruiting a, a Google season of docs uh, candidate. Yeah, so just to provide some numbers, uh, there are open numbers for Google Summer of Code um, for different countries. So these are numbers uh, for uh, this year. So when uh, JSOC is reduced by half, uh, so before that, uh, the numbers were uh, twice more, but they were designed for uh, three months of uh, 30 plus hours per week. Now it's basically one and a half months of, let's say, full time, something like that. And these are numbers per country. So it ranges from 1,500 uh, to uh, 3,300, depending on the country. And, but these are references basically for student internship. If you talk about Google Season of Docs, then we are rather talking about either professional writers or amateur writers who are interested to get introduced uh, to open source. And I have no idea how to map these numbers, uh, but yeah, this is basically the reference uh, we have. So I would make a uh, guess that if we use these numbers as a reference we would be able uh, to find somebody definitely not a professional uh, uh, writer based in uh, san francisco uh, but uh, yeah we could actually find somebody who would be interested but i think that it would be still an expectation that it's part-time and that's a stipend no to the uh, salary because one of the things that uh, we have no legal way to pay salary in uh, the vast majority of the countries. So, so agreed, agreed that stipend is the right approach. And I mm -hmm. like the idea of using this. I'm prone to say, let's ask Google for 6,000 or maybe 9,000 on the notion that that will get us four to seven months of time the project is intended to go for seven months, but we would just reduce the effort as necessary to use those funds. Other yeah, guidance? It's not the seven months of implementation. It's just three months of implementation. Right? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Look at the timeline. It, the, 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 if I read the timeline correctly, I could be reading it wrong, but my reading is writing can start April 16 and does not end until November 16. Mm, not the, the, so the it's organization announced. Right. So on April 16th, um, the doc can officially begin. So it's uh, the earliest date. The same time deadline for hiring technical writer is on May 17th. 
and uh, I would expect that uh, what we do first is community bonding so that uh, the writer doesn't start uh, implementing things right away. Okay. Because it will, is uh, unlikely to work. So I would make a wild guess that uh, the optimistic uh, uh, date for starting implementation is sometime in May, maybe okay. even late May. And yeah, from late May until November, well, yes, you're right, it's still uh, five it's, plus months. It's a good point. That means it's six months instead of seven. So I like that better. Six months is is fits my, my desire for a nice non-prime number. I like that. Okay. So, and what number are you plan uh, to finally apply for because so this I, number is I think we should I think that number is wrong and we should reduce it to ask for 6000 and then I, I admit how thinking 6000 would be a thousand a month that's a that's lower than even the lowest of the google summer of code but we would just scale the effort to match the benefit there is that fits with google's guidelines for how much should be requested we could ask for more i think we're a good candidate but the more we ask for, the, the greater the chances will be rejected. Yeah, so one thing that uh, we can actually spend more money than we get from Google, because, mm. well, there are multiple opportunities. Firstly, travel grant. Secondly, we could just use additional budget if we decide to do so. Uh, so I think it would be up to our discretion if we decide to do so. But yeah, if we get accepted, then we get the budget. If we don't get accepted because we asked for 100K, then it's a completely different story, right? So your Google's recommendation is to ask for no more than 6,000. Yeah, I think that we actually have an answer. And I believe that for 6,000, uh, we can actually find a part-time writer for six months. Right. Again, it says, uh, well, basic expectation that it will likely be, uh, well, definitely not Switzerland, uh, but yeah, maybe other country. Yeah, a great opportunity to do an outreach exercise. Mm -hmm. So I think we've, at least, unless others on the board have objections, I think I'm, I'm going to take that as my guidance as I complete the pull request to update this document uh, later today, that I'll shift that from 12,000 to 6,000 is our intended request. Any objections? Any concerns? No, nope, none from me. Great, thanks. Mm. Okay. Uh, Okay. Mm. Yeah, and that's a that's a good one. We've got we just received notice that the five hundred dollars stipend from last season, last year's season of docs, has arrived in our in our account. So we do it have. It hasn't arrived in our, to our account yet. It has arrived to the Linux Foundation. Oh, oh, so it's still not quite reached us. Thanks. Thanks for the clarity. Uh, yeah, but uh, it will be there. So just to explain how the payment uh, would happen, we have LFX crowdfunding. So basically it's um, well crowdfunding platform. It's integrated with mentorship. And mentorship uh, is uh, the way how we could uh, basically legally handle uh, this stipend. Uh, by using uh, the Linux Foundation framework. So basically we can register the student in the system or otherwise, and uh, then uh, the Linux Foundation can do the payment through Expensify and then uh, and like all funny and interesting things like taxes won't be our problem, right? Uh, so, and yeah, my expectation is that uh, Google money would also lend um, in the crowdfunding. And currently, just to show it to you, we have more than 3,000 there from donations. And 
well, we have never really invested uh, in promoting the missions. Um, but yeah, we, we, if needed, we can probably raise more money. Plus, we have still uh, several servant uh, on the on other accounts. So, did I just see your smiling face on the previous page? Yeah, because I was asked to provide testimonial they could use in the blog post and finally they put me on the website because <laughs> I was the only one who promote, provided testimonial for crowdfunding. <laughs> Just from what I know, but whatever. It was approved uh, by advocacy and advocacy, by the way. Nice. Okay, uh, but yeah, so yeah, you can see that uh, there are basic organizations doing uh, donate uh, uh, donations, etc. And they updated the website again, so we do have me mechanical mirror. Uh, so yeah, currently we have uh, more than three thousand on this platform, plus five hundred from JSOT, plus uh, this year's JSOC, uh, which should arrive eventually, plus. Yeah, whatever budget uh, we get from for JSOT, plus whatever donations we can facilitate if needed. And yeah, uh, don't we ha still have quite a bit of money uh, with um, SPI? Yeah, we have. Uh, so we have around eight thousand there. So it's not a lot, but it's some. And uh, yeah, this money basically after handling all payments, for example, uh, yeah, we reimbursed a key key for almost 5,000 uh, in the beginning of the last year, basically just uh, handling all the stuff historical and uh, a few other bits. So, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I was surprised just now because I thought I remembered something around 20, 25,000 or something. Uh, that we had like two years ago well we spent quite a number of quite a lot of money on outreach uh, on other programs also on uh, payments uh, plus i do not include the jsoc budget because the jsoc budget is separate according to jp8 though physically they are on the same the money are on the same account so yeah, if we talk about running our own outreach programs, probably we should think about fundraising or promoting donations a bit. Uh, but yeah, until we start really spending money, we are okay. Thanks to all sponsors, by the way. Okay. So are we all set for JSOT? So one thing is about crowdfunding platform. So right now, according to JEP or whatever, it's still in preview. And from what I know, I'm the only person who has access to the Expensify backend. So probably I should add um, other board members to that until we start doing any serious payments and processing. Yeah, probably we should think about treasurer role and whatever to handle these things later. Okay. Mm, yeah, to specify. Okay. Any other comments on this topic? Yes, I just we do not touch uh, the discussion about Jenkins three, um, but yeah, yeah, I think it would be a good topic for the next meeting. Could you could you give a really quick uh, summary of what this is about? Um, I remember Jenkins three being mentioned as a version bump because of the recent dependency updates and such. Yeah, so we still have uh, some dependencies we need to update. Uh, for example, a Groovy update. 
especially if you want to support Java 17 anytime soon. Um, and also uh, there is uh, basically a marketing side uh, because um, yeah, Jenkins 3 could be used uh, as an opportunity to promote Jenkins, promote new approaches. So for example, full configuration as code, infrastructure as code, new management, new packaging and something like that. So pretty similar to what we did for Jenkins 2 and pipeline. When pipeline was basically uh, available before, but uh, with Jenkins 2, we said that yeah, we want to have it as a standard uh, or something like that. So we could try to do the same for Jenkins 3. But again, uh, all of that is just hand waving at the moment. Uh, we need to really discuss what we want to do. So, for example, today Alex Earl uh, asked uh, whether we want to drop support for Java 8. I believe that uh, dropping support for Java 8 would be a bit radical step even for Jenkins 3. But uh, if you talk about changing uh, Docker packages by default to Java 11, it's something I would really like to discuss for Jenkins 3. I, I don't think that even needs, you know, Jenkins 3, we can just do this whenever. Yeah, maybe, but then things break. Yeah, let's let's hold off for that discussion until next week, because we're way over time. Yep. So sorry about that. And uh, yeah. Well, next time, let's uh, try to not go over time. And next time, I think in two weeks, uh, there is nothing major uh, going to happen. Now that the meeting happens uh, at 6 p.m. in UTC, so if you're based in Australia, in Europe, uh, the time zone change is yet to happen, and uh, the meeting time will change. Okay. So that's it from me, and thanks a lot for all your time. Yeah, I know that it's already dark in Europe. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. See you all. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Good luck. Bye. Bye.